Guys, we're back. All right. Ask C. Roy, episode 11. Today, we're gonna get through two questions. We got two main questions I wanna answer today. And Mike asked me, when is the best time for a cheat meal? And what are some of your personal favorites? So cheat meals, we all have heard about cheat meals. So when it comes to cheat meals, there's not you know, one golden rule for everybody when it comes to their cheat meals. Um, it all depends, guys, on your goals. So, you know, if it's a person trying to lose weight, um, you know, depending where they're starting at, that's gonna depend on how many, when they get their cheat meals um, and how serious they are, the the time frame uh, that they they're trying to accomplish their goal in. Um, you know, for a perfect example. Um, you know, my girlfriend, she wanted to do like this uh, transformation, um, like a three month transformation thing. So she had a limited amount of time. Um, so she didn't, I mean, she wasn't like overweight or anything. You know, she's very small, very petite girl. She just kind of wanted to redistribute her weight a little bit, uh, put on a little bit more muscle and, and have that muscle show. Um, so, you know, I put her on a program where for those three months, she only got one cheat meal every two weeks um, you know because she was already fairly skinny and she wasn't overweight she could still afford to have cheat meals but because it was such a short amount of time only three months once a week would have been too much so we did one every two weeks um, so it all depends on goals guys now like for me personally um, I have a very fast metabolism um, I'm, I'm naturally very lean um, you know, I've never really been over probably 12 to 13% body fat. Um, so my goal right now is to get big and to put on muscle to gain weight. So with my high metabolism, as much as I'm training, I can afford to do one to two cheat meals a week. As long as, you know, a majority of my weekly calories are coming from good quality foods. Um, if my diet is on point for the week, I'm getting all my veggies in, all my micronutrients, and, and you know, my diet is you know, picture perfect, then I'll give myself some leeway and I'll do maybe two cheat meals in one week. If it's a busy week and you know, I'm missing meals here and there, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not eating the way I really want to, then I, I won't make up for that with you know, garbage calories. So you know, there's a lot of things that go into it. A golden rule of mine though, when it comes to cheat meals, is that regardless, whenever you're eating it, it doesn't matter if it's once a week, twice a week, it doesn't matter if it's once a month, if you're getting one once a month, whatever it is, you have to earn that cheat meal. You don't get to eat that unless you earn it first. You have to crush a workout before you eat that meal. I'm not talking about a day before, I'm talking about if you wanna have this cheat meal on like a Friday night, then your ass is gonna be in the gym sometime on Friday before that meal and you are gonna crush a workout. Not just a typical come in, check the box workout. Like you're gonna go in there with a different mindset. You're gonna go all out and you're gonna earn that shit. That's a, it's a golden rule, never break it, ever. How can you tell when to apply a cheat meal and how to properly apply a cheat meal? Once a week is fairly standard. But that also, now if I'm talking with a person that has a lot of body fat, and maybe has a lot of fat around the stomach area, then once a week is gonna be way too much. Now if this is a person that is just trying to change their lifestyle, you know, they're not under the gun, they don't have a certain amount of time they wanna lose this, um, then you have a little bit more leeway. Um, you can throw in maybe one cheat meal a week just to keep them sane, just to give them something to look forward to so they'll stay on the right path. As far as cheat meals go, actually the actual meal itself, um, my definition of a cheat meal is anything that's not on your standard nutrition plan. A lot, my diet consists of a lot of you know lean meats, you know your chickens, turkeys, uh, a grass-fed beef, you know steak. I have a couple of steaks a week. Um, you know sweet potatoes, white rice, lots of veggies, broccoli, salmon from time to time. Now. My mother makes the most amazing lasagna and she knows I'm a health nut so she makes it with you know like whole grain, uh, organic whole grain noodles and she uses for the meat she'll use like a, a, a lean a ground sirloin um, so she kind of makes this lasagna like when you look at it at the end of the day it's actually not that bad 
but it's not part of my standard diet, so I count that as a cheat meal. Um, you know, people think cheat meal, they think, oh, it's fast food or pizza, like, not necessarily. It's anything that's not on your standard nutrition plan, so that's what a cheat meal is. Some of my personal favorites, you can't go wrong. I mean, the one I probably eat most often is a burger and fry. Um, I love a good burger. Pizza. I'm a pizza junkie, man. I can throw down an entire pizza. But the pizza is a lot of calories. Usually when I throw down a pizza, I'm done for the day. I'm not eating anything else. Um, the burger, I, I do that one more, more often because it's a little bit more convenient. I can eat it, I can, you know, and then I can eat again a little bit later. Uh, and, and it doesn't bog me down as much. Um, the pizza, I eat and then I go into a food coma because I eat the whole damn thing. Now, another thing that I like to do when it comes to cheat meals is I like to try and pick a cheat meal that still offers some benefit. Um, so never will I go to a fast food restaurant because that's not even food. Um, I will never, I haven't eaten at a fast food restaurant in probably six or seven years, man. Um, it's just, it's not real food and it offers zero benefit whatsoever. Um, you know, if I go burger and a fry, I go to a restaurant like, that I, I found restaurants that grass fed beef um, and you know, or, or all natural beef, you know, not treated with antibiotics, stuff like that. They make their buns from scratch. They don't use hydrogenated oils. Um, there's no high fructose corn syrup in it. So I, I try to find places, I pick meals that still offer benefit. You know, a burger, I'm still getting good quality red meat. Um, you know, if, especially if I get that grass-fed burger, it's still quality red meat, man. It's still a good source of protein. Um, pizza is my definition of an all-out cheat because there's really nothing, a ton of benefit, uh, uh, that, that's going to benefit you really with pizza, um, especially the ones I get. I just get them loaded with meat. That's why I do pizza maybe once a month. You know, the burger is the one that I go with the most often because it still offers some benefit and it doesn't completely you know, bog me down and wake me out for the day. But always, every time, I'm crushing a workout beforehand. Never will I indulge when I sat on my ass all day and did nothing. Um, you didn't deserve it. So I'm gonna come into the gym and I'm gonna put my body through hell and then I will recover and, and, and indulge and enjoy that meal and I can sit back eating it, feeling guilt-free knowing I earned that shit. That's cheat meals, man, cheat meals 101. The next question I want to get to, I was asked, what's the most useless thing I see done in the gym? And I really like this question because it's, 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 you're not typically asked this. You, everyone always wants to know what to do. What do I need to do to this? What do I need to do to that? What do I need to get rid of this? What do I need to get that? Never are you asked, what's the most useless thing you see? If you asked me this question two, three years ago, my aunt, I would probably give you a direct answer and give you like a specific exercise or something. But, maybe showing a little bit maturity, I guess. I've come to realize, man, the longer I've been in this business, and the more research I've done, and you know, stay up to date on everything, you can never rule anything out, man. There's a time and a place for everything. You know, I never like to speak in absolutes, saying that you should never do this, or you know, you should always do this, you know. Never speak in absolutes. I mean, we've come to the day and age where there's a legit exercise now that teaches you to deadlift with a completely rounded back, which goes against everything I was taught coming up. But this is actually uh, an exercise that is becoming very popular. What I will say though, the most useless thing I see done in the gym could be anything, could be everything, or it could be nothing. It's all dependent on the effort you put into it. The deadlift is my favorite exercise. I think it's the greatest exercise that everybody should be doing in one way, shape, or form. But if a person's half-assing it, and they're not giving it full effort, then it's fucking useless. Get out of the gym. You can be doing anything. If you're half-assing it, then you're wasting your time, and it's useless. People, they, they, they're in the gym for three hours doing a million different fucking things, but those million things are done at 30% intensity. They're done with 30% effort. Instead of picking three things, giving 100% effort on all three, and working out for maybe an hour, you get so much more out of that hour if it's done at full intensity and full effort 
than a million things done with a shit effort. So that's my answer, man. The most useless thing I see done in the gym are workouts done with half-ass effort. If you found this video helpful, like it, share it. Most of all, subscribe to the channel, especially if you want to be a healthy, jacked, badass motherfucker.